we call this a cell, we can name a cell. I can go to define name and I can name it as uh, V. Uh, the advantage of this is that let's say I want to find where V is. I can enter V and I can press enter. I get it. I can select a range, right click. I can define it. Okay, let's define it as T. So every time I want to find where T is, I just type T and I'll find it. We'll talk about this. Why is it important? Because it's uh, uh, considered as absolute and there are other advantages, but I'm just telling you right now how to name a cell or a range. Okay, uh, we call this the function bar. We call this the function bar. We call this the name cell. So uh, the good thing about Excel is that Excel has built-in functions. Okay, now built-in functions basically mean that you have the answer. If, if I type sum, I, I, I get the, the syntax, uh, number one, number two, number three. So it's, 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 a, it's a very easy job. I just have to type the function and I'll know. So sum means that I need to find out the sum of the range, fine. Average means that I may need to find the average of the range. Okay, uh, what does count mean? Can someone help me out? Count it the number of cells. It counts the? Numeric values, the cells with numeric values. The cells with numeric values, excellent. It counts the cells that basically has numbers. It does not count only the cells. Because if you see over here, I am counting from uh, it's six till this is giving me three because this is an empty cell and this is text. So it's not counting both of them. So it only counts the cell that have numbers. Okay. Uh, uh, remember one thing that if I use count a, which means count all, it means that it will basically count everything. Now, why is it counting even the empty? Well, I'll tell you why, because it's not empty. I added a space. So if I delete the space, it says four. Why four? Because, one, two, three, four. Why? Because count A is counting alphanumeric uh, spaces, numbers, okay, but not null values. How do we how do we count the null values? How do we count the null values? Okay, you got this right. Count A basically does what? Count A counts everything. Agree with me, and you agree with me that count simply counts the numbers, the values, the okay, that's it. Is this two yes. points clear? So what I'm saying is, how do we count a cell that has nothing? A cell that is empty. For that, we use this count blank. I'm pretty sure you must have done that. Count blank basically, not count a blank, it's count blank. So mm -hmm. count blank counts all the cells uh, within the range that are empty, that have no value. Space is a value. Please, space is a value. If I put a space, it says zero. But if there's no space, if it's empty, it says one. So I have count, counts numbers. I have, you, you should be making your notes, frankly speaking. I mean, I, I would like to see it next time. Make a, make a notebook afterwards. I, I'll, I'll share this video. Please make your notes, okay? Frankly, it will help you a lot, okay? And don't ever think, oh, I'm so dumb, I have to make my notes. No, come on, everyone can forget. So count blank, count, and um, then how can I tell count text? For example, if I have over here is, LGS. Uh, how do I do this? I want to count in this range where I have text. How would I do that? How do I count text? Okay, no problem. Can someone wants to help me out? It's a okay, no problem. All we do is it's so easy. You'll just say, Oh, really? It was so damn easy. So I'll say count A. Here we go. And we'll simply subtract is count because you don't have count text for God's sake. You don't have that function. So here we go. Two from all the values I've subtracted count because I know count A counts everything and I know count counts numbers. So what if I subtract from everything only the numbers? I get the one with text and the story. You get the point, all of you? Yes. Now, this is what you have to do. This is what you have to, you have to develop this thinking, okay? And this thinking will only be developed unless and until you don't, you know all the functions. What is Excel all about? You know the functions, you just have to implement them. Just, okay, so data analysis, use it and analysis skills and use these functions. 
That's why I'm saying write them down, note them down somewhere. You should know what the function does. Okay, I, I want you to take the minimum time and solve the problem. This is what you have to do. Okay, so do make your notes. Even if you know it, make a note. This function does this. This function does this. Believe me, I'm telling you this is going to help you out a lot. It will. You will see the difference. Then we have is max. Max means the maximum value, the highest, the tallest, the longest, whatever word. You need to know what the question is. So obviously I want to find the, uh, the, the highest value, I use max. I want to find the, the lowest value, I use min. So this is what we have. We really need to understand the question, believe, believe me, okay? So understanding the question is the most important thing. Obviously it is the most important thing, but why am I emphasizing on this fact is because at times students don't get the question in debt analysis, okay? We'll, we'll work on that later on. Then we have is the if and the nested if. If is, is a pretty simple thing. If means that, uh, let, let me in fact just get rid of all this and delete all this. Uh, I use is equals to if I get the syntax. The syntax says, give me the logical test. Okay, my logical test is what if I say like, if this value, if it's uh, greater than or equal to 90, then you do what? Okay, um, good or otherwise, um, I'm typing, um, not good okay so here we go what do i get i get over here is is good and if i replicate i get this now why is this happening well because look over here a when i go down a2 look at a2 a2 is changing into a3 a4 a5 a6 uh this concept where the where the cells increase by by themselves is known as relative referencing so relatively they increase relatively they increase okay so uh, my condition is, is changing in every cell when I go down. This is a very good property of Excel. If cells were, did not replicate, we had to type the functions in every cell. That was nonsense. It wouldn't have not worked. So one thing is that whenever you have to display value of true, uh, this could be a value, a multiplication of two cells. This could be any user defined word in double quotes. So whenever we type in double quotes, it's either user defined. Okay, so keep this in mind. So in double quotes, I can write anything, comma, value false. In double quotes, I can write anything else. So this is the way basically your simple if works. Here is the syntax, any question at this moment. Anyone, anyone? Sure, no one? Okay, great, great. Okay, then you have is nested if. I'll just uh in fact i'll explain it through this way um if the value in a9 in fact let me construct it for you uh, actually nested if is very important you, you might have been using it uh if i would say is if the value this value oh i didn't type is equal to if this value is greater than or equal to 90 then I would like to display A. Now what happens is, why do I need another comma? Because I want to display the value false. No, I can't display value false because I want to implement nested if, if inside if. Why do I need to do that? Because I have multiple conditions. In the, in the above case, I just had one condition. If it's 90, good or bad, no. Now what I want is that if the value in um, A9, a or is 90 display this if it's greater than 80 display b if it's greater than c uh, a 70 display c so on and so 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 what's happening i am i need multiple conditions one if can only cater one condition so if i need multiple conditions i need multiple ifs that's the answer so what i'll do now is instead of typing the false value i will now type another if you will get acquainted with all this syntax don't worry or you already know it i don't know but it's not pretty tough. So greater than or equal to 80, I will type over here is B. Okay, fine, true value. Do I need another false value? No, I still don't because I need another F because I need another condition. Since I need another condition, I need another F. So my next condition is that if this value is, is greater than, oh, ah, yes, greater than and equal to 70, 
comma, I'll have C. And one last one, that's it. If this particular value is greater than equal to 60, comma, let's have a D. And at the end we can have is a false, which means that uh, I want like fail, uh, fail. try fail. again, right? So try again. Now what happens is, why is try again appearing? When will try again appear? The try again will only appear if this condition is not true, if this condition is not true, if this condition is not true, if this condition is not true. If all of these conditions are not true, only then it will jump here and say try again. So if we try, if we try this, implement it. Sir, you haven't added uh, equal to sign it, Jagap. Uh, yes, you're right. If, uh, if a9. Right, so here we go. So this is what we. Oh, sorry, my is equal to isn't properly working. I replicate again, uh, here we go. So we get this, right? So why are we getting try again? Because it's 50. So that's how the nested works. You just have to take care of the commas and all that number brackets you open, the number brackets you have to close. Obviously, this is your nested if. You will also work with nested functions, which means using if with VLOOKUP and other functions. We, we will be doing all this as well. Okay, just one more function before our time ends. We have like five minutes, we'll, we'll have another one. I would have liked to extend the class because, but uh, we have classes. Uh, okay, um, you done sum if, right? Okay, you done, okay, I'll not go to sum if. You have done um, count if. Yes, you, we have done it. Count if, yeah. exactly. Yeah, count if you're done. Uh, and uh, let, let's talk about conditional counting. That's important. Uh, you, since you've done count if, uh, look at this case that I have a range, and in the range, the criteria is greater than 1450. So it tells me that in this, in the following cells, I have four values which are greater than 1450. So the concept is that you first of all specify the range and the criteria. So if the if you have to use any comparison operator or a wildcard, comparison operator or wildcard, you have to put in double quotes. See, I have to, if I don't use double quotes, it will not work. One was user defined, double quotes. Now there's another rule that if we have comparison operators or wildcards, we have to put in double quotes only then it will work. Okay. So it says four because there are four cells which are greater than 1450. In the same way, A star, you might have done in excess as well, a star and question mark are two wild cards. A star means that it should begin with A because star represents all the 256 characters. Star represents all the 256 characters. Numbers, uppercase, lowercase, uh, other symbols, if you combine them together on your keyboard, they are 256 by the way. So A star means begin with A. I'm not concerned what comes after A. So it says that there are four, again, four names that start with A. If I would have written over here is uh, star and T, I have over here three names that end with T because T is coming at the end and before that I have a star. Is this clear? All of you. Sure, can you explain this again? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it again. Uh, uh, did you get A star? Yes. Okay, A star I basically, yeah. A, a star was that it should begin with A, A should be, be there, but after A, whatever is appearing, it's just not my concern, forget it, okay? It's not be considered. So same case over here, star T means that T is coming at the end. I'm trying to find whatever is ending with T. So whatever is coming before T. Now, since I said star means all the two characters, all the characters, any of the characters, if they're appearing, any of and any number of characters are appearing before T, not my concern. I'm only concerned about any word, any string ending with capital T. So it says, okay, fine. Um, there are three that end with T. You get the point. So if you want to find the last one, you type star T. If you want from the beginning, you type the, that letter and then star. That's the way it goes. Is it clear now? You have, you must have used this in excess as well in your queries in excess. Okay, it's, it's the same concept used over there as well. Is this clear, all of you? Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Uh, 
Right, so we are almost done. Uh, we will continue with from here, okay? So, inshallah, it will not take time. But remember, you just keep on asking questions. I will upload this lecture as well again every time when we have a class, I'll upload the lecture, okay? Right? Okay, well, just hold on. Let me take your time. Just hold on. Let me take your attendance. Wait up. Just hold on. That's the most important thing. I have to take your attendance. <laughs> Uh, just one second. Oh no, where am I? Let me, it's not in sequence. This one. This is eleven watt. One a one eleven watt. This eleven. Uh, eleven E and D. Eleven E and D. One A one eleven D and E, and this is our third. B, B, B. Sir, Sorry, it's B. B and B. B for ball. B. Okay, it's B and B and B and doll B. B, and B. B. Okay, right. No one should leave because I'm, the attendance is important. So I, I I should have taken in the beginning, but I just forgot. I can't take it in the beginning as well because students keep on joining. Right, I'm done it. So, beta, let's uh, meet next time, inshallah. Okay, right? Okay, beta, all of you then. Okay, Allah. Okay, beta. Thank you.